Look, I'm I'm doing the jumpsuit. I wore real clothes hey, for y'all today. On. No onesie. All right. That's Appreciate how special it. you are. Hey, also, but no shade to the onesie. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Right? Come on. Now. I'm, right? I'm just saying, onesies are great. <laughs> well, one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you is really like the decision of taking blind spiding from movie to actual television, but most importantly, including the strength of women and especially women of color in that narrative. Yeah, we didn't want to make a TV show um, and Lionsgate really wanted us to make a TV show. And in, in thinking about the process of making the film, we realized that the only story we were interested in hearing more of was Ashley's and by extension, a bunch of other characters who like could could also exist in this world. But really, like when we look back on the making of the film, like the the it was such an incredible experience, but both like in the edit and in the writing and in the promotion afterwards, it was like, oh, Ashley is a really great character that Jasmine shaped. And uh, we wish there could be more. So when we were asked to, if we would want to do a TV show, we were like, no. Well, if it's about Ashley, then yes. But we were sure they would say no to that because the film so hinged on our dynamic. And instead, Lionsgate was really excited about it. Um, yeah. And so... We just, uh, we kept making outlandish requests and they kept saying yes. And so then we had no excuse to not make the show. At that point, we were so in love with it. We were like, oh, we have yeah. to do this now. It's going to be really good. No, I'm totally here for it. And I was so excited. I was like, yes, put her at the front and center. I'm here for it. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things, you talk about so many things that are so relevant to today, but you, it was one episode that really struck me because it's something we don't talk about enough and it's really discipline with children. <laughs> and we see so many TikToks about it, about people talking about their trauma with how they receive discipline. If my mom is watching, I have trauma, but I forget. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the importance of including that because it's something we really need to be discussing. You know, I think there's a thing that we try to do with the show at every turn, um, which is to present to present conversations where they actually are, not where we want them to be, or um, or the or the glossy TV way that'll make everybody feel comfortable. And so I think you know we were in the writers' room and we were we were telling jokes about discipline and about like kids and you know, what you would say publicly versus what would happen privately. And uh, I think the more and more we talked about it, the more we were like, you know, a little boy starts acting up to his mother who's searching to, to reinforce an authority when she no longer has a co-parent that was the authority. How does she find her as is discussed in the show? Like, how does she, you know, find her good cop and bad cop in herself? Uh, we just found that like a fascinating thing to watch in real time. Like, you know, a lot of times, you know, often like a, a, by the time a, a, a single mom gets to that point, she may have been a single mom for a while. On this show, it just happened. Right. You know, there's an immediate absence. And so we get to watch this happen over the course of the half hour episode. And, um, I think we were just like, you know, let's here are the things that we've heard people say and our parents have said and our peers have said. And, you know, it's going to stir people up a little bit. But that's the that's. That's the fun of blind spotting that I think is different from other half hour like network sitcoms. It's like we don't put a bow on shit. We're like, it look, conversations end halfway through, nothing gets resolved. People make decisions, people make choices about the way they're gonna live their lives. And like as humans in our real lives, we embrace and love all kinds of different flawed people. And I think the show presents that same premise. Like, hey, nobody on this show is squeaky clean. Everybody is very human and very raw and flawed and funny and worthy of love. And so I think that episode was kind of just about watching people who are trying to do their best, figure out what to do about a, a, a little boy who's wilding out. Look, the other day I was, my godson was crying. I was like, you better stop crying before I give you something to cry about. I was like, oh my God, I'm my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you realize why that threat is, is real. Important. Right. right? Yeah. But one of the things that I do love about the series is it really shows the strength of community and how it takes a village to really shape us to who we are. And I wanted to ask the both of you, like who was that village for you? Who's that community for you that really helped you shape you to the person you are today? Wow, what a beautiful question. Yeah, I mean, so many people, right? The, um, I think like it, it's uh, every, everyone, I mean, like your parents, as you get older, you start to realize like the, the, 
the things you didn't notice when you were when you were a kid, right? Like the the ways that your parents had to maybe lean on other people in the community or whatever. My mom used to clean house for people and I was wearing all of their hand-me-down clothes, right? Like I didn't I didn't know that. I didn't really like didn't register growing up, but like that's not that was actually like a, a thing my my mother was always really grateful for and was was like an element of community that was important to her. You know what I'm saying? Like like uh you know, my dad, like hanging out at, my dad was still like relatively young when he had me. So like going to parties with my dad and meeting his friends and being just like taken care of by all of these people, like passed through a party, like contributes the way that I see society, you know, like. Also what, what really comes up in the Bay specifically is like, also the, the, the cross section of people that are your like uncles and aunts and cousins and godparents and all that is like, it's all you got a you got a you got a uh, you know a godmom slash aunt who's Filipino and you got a you got another one who's you know who's Chicana and you got another one who you know you've got your your you've got the, you know these five other people that have been so so much a part of raising your life and developing the way in which you see the world and so so much of a uh, of at least season one which I hope we get more seasons so we can continue to expand and look at this in different ways because I think you only got up to episode four right. Mm-hmm. So you haven't met um, Nancy yet, which mm-hmm. is which is Janelle's mom next door. You, she's like walked through a scene, but you haven't like spent time with her yet, which is yeah. a trip. But like as we start to bring in, per, you know, parent figures and other characters like that was our upbringing was just like you've got all these people that are responsible for you and they all see the world very differently. And you're responsible to all of them in very similar ways. And so for us, the show really was like, all right, let's get a let's get a group of people that all walk through the world differently and drop it in the middle. So they're not like it's not like the real world where like all their all their realities are clashing while they're getting to know each other. They've known each other for years before right. the show starts. So you're dropping in in the middle and being like they're not navigating the first conversations about X, Y, Z. You know, they've been doing this their whole lives as elders and as you know as younger siblings. And so that's the fun of of all the the interpersonal dynamics is it really does mirror the kind of upbringing that David and I both had and a lot of the writers and and people involved in the show as well. Look, I appreciate the both of you so much. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I appreciate you. We're manifesting more seasons right now. We're claiming that it's already done. Let's go. And I hope you have have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you so much. We appreciate you.